everybody. Um, we are continuing our adventures in chromatic harmony, and today we are going to start talking about some really advanced stuff, um, what music theorists called enharmonic reinterpretation. It's a way, a fancy way, to modulate to a distantly related key. So, to start the conversation, what I want to do is show you this. Do you remember this from last week? Chord A and chord B? These chords are enharmonically equivalent. And we decided, hey, this one here, A flat, C, G flat, is spelled like an incomplete dominant seventh, which we could use in the key of D flat, being an A flat seven. Whereas we said chord B looked like an augmented six chord, and not just any augmented six chord, but the Italian augmented six chord, where the A flat would be lay in the bass, and the F sharp would be phi. These two sound the same, but are spelled differently, and thus are enharmonically equivalent. The first one was uh, considered five seven, key of D flat, whereas chord B was considered an augmented six in the key of C. What we're going to do today is exploit this enharmonicism as a means of modulation. What does that mean? We can take any 5-7 and reinterpret it as an augmented six chord in a new key. Likewise, we can take any augmented six chord, respell it, and get a five seven in a new key to go to a lot of distantly related key areas. I want to show you how this works in a couple of contexts. So let's take a look here at example two, this is from the Enharmonic Reinterpretation 5-7 and Augmented 6th Guide. And what we see here are actually the chords that are quite related to the ones we were just looking at. Notice what we've got here is a German Augmented 6th chord, Lay, Do, Me, and Fi in the key of C major. But then look what I do to it. I take the old Lay, I keep it here in the bass, but now I'm reinterpreting lay as soul. Lay becomes soul. And then look at what I do up here. The old phi, F sharp, is now going to be reinterpreted as fa in the new key. A flat is sol in the key of D flat major, which is where we are going. And G flat is fa, and harmonically equivalent to F sharp, which was phi in the key of C major. Let's listen to this example. so swift, so smooth, and totally a distantly key area. Uh, C has no sharps, no flats. D flat major has five. We can go the other way as well. So what I'm going to do now is go to example one from our guide. And here you will see, instead of pivoting on the augmented sixth and reinterpreting it as a 5-7, I'm going to do it the other way around, where this time I'm using the 5-7 in the old key and then reinterpreting it as a German augmented sixth in a new key. Check it out. So the bass is soul in the old key, and that becomes lay in the new key. G is lay in the key of B minor, and check out what the voice leading does. It will go down by half step to the soul of that new key. 
Then if we go up here and find our chordal seventh of the five seven, it's this F here, which is fa. That we are going to respell not as F, but as E sharp, which is phi in the key of B minor. And then that E sharp, that phi goes up to sol just as we would expect it to. Let's take a listen to this example. Again, it's another way to get from one key to a distantly related key very quickly, very swiftly. That was C major with no sharps or flats going to B minor with two sharps, a distantly related key. So this is the bare bones introduction to enharmonic reinterpretation. Um, it's such a cool tool. It's worth the effort in learning how to respell these chords to modulate. Um, that'll wrap this up for now, and in our next video, we'll take a look at how Beethoven uses this technique to modulate in one of his late piano sonatas.